The Las Vegas Sun newspaper has written an op-ed that needs to be heard. Finally, the press are taking the upgraded threat of Trumpism seriously. So let me read this article for you, which is not just well-written, but it is published with the confidence of its factual reporting. I'll link to the original article below. Please share it and help those remaining undecided voters maintain America's greatness without the help of authoritarianism. Donald Trump's racism, sexism, xenophobia and penchant for corruption have long made him unfit for any public office, let alone the presidency. But as he continues his bid for a second term in the White House, there is an unsettling and undeniable shift that is leading many experts, observers and even some Trump supporters to conclude that the former president's mental acuity and sharpness are also in decline, that his physical health and stamina are waning and that his frustration and anger are boiling over. Americans from both sides of the political spectrum should be alarmed by Trump's words and behaviour. The nation must confront the fact that beyond his hateful character, he is crippled cognitively and showing clear signs of mental illness. There is no need to resort to armchair psychology to interpret what is apparent. If victorious, Trump would be the oldest president ever inaugurated. In recent weeks, he's cancelled an increasing number of public appearances with Trump's own campaign citing the candidate's exhaustion. When he does appear publicly, Trump struggles to complete sentences or sustain coherent thoughts and has shown a pronounced difficulty concentrating and a tendency to repeat himself, sometimes within the same sentence. At a rally in New Hampshire, for example, Trump began to discuss infrastructure and wound up segueing into a disjointed monologue about loyalty and perceived injustices against him, ending with a bewildering comment about windmills causing cancer. This is not an isolated incident. A recent analysis by the New York Times noted that Trump's rally speeches over the past eight years have become darker, longer, more profane and increasingly unfocused and unhinged a troubling sign that he is no longer able to articulate ideas or reason in ways we expect our leaders. This makes him prey to manipulations by his own staff, or worse, the control of foreign adversaries. He shambles about aimlessly, slurs his words and sometimes speaks gibberish, always an effortless liar, now that his speeches are nothing more than a series of lies tangled in a mass inside his head, it appears he no longer even knows he's lying. He's called for the imprisonment of journalists pledged to purge the government of deep state operatives he perceives as disloyal and is amplifying his tyrannical rhetoric. He's also increased his public praise for dictators like Russia's Vladimir Putin and China's Xi Jinping while using increasingly fascist language to describe those he deems political enemies. The former president has even suggested using the military against his domestic critics, an approach reminiscent of repressive regimes in history that has often been the persecutor to creeping authoritarianism. With Trump's fragility comes an increasing dependence on enablers who show a disturbing willingness to indulge his delusions, amplify his paranoia or steer his feeble mind towards their own goals. Among these enablers is his running mate, Senator J.D. Vance of Ohio. Should Trump be deemed unfit to serve, Vance would step into power. Once a never-Trump conservative who openly criticised Trump as a danger to the republic, Vance has since fully embraced an extremist ideology, morphing into a vocal MAGA supporter who seems eager to emulate Trump's worst instincts. Beyond his weird obsession with childless women whom he says are deranged and sociopathic and his penchant for spreading conspiracy theories about immigrants and other marginalised communities, Vance possesses a different threat to democracy than Trump. He has repeatedly demonstrated that he is little more than a puppet of his billionaire hedge fund benefactors and has openly stated he would have refused to certify the 2020 election, suggesting he would subordinate constitutional principles for personal profit and power. His willingness to discard any principles shows that he would likely not push back against Trump's excesses or his deteriorating mental stability. Instead, he might embrace a Trumpian authoritarianism, exacerbating the very dangers we face with Trump's current mental decline. If history has taught us anything, it is that democracies are fragile. America's founders designed the presidency to be a stabilising force. Trump's instability 
Paired with his and Vance's increasing willingness to trample democratic norms and visible contempt of anyone not like them, has transformed what might have once been seen by conservatives as an uncomfortable leadership style into an existential threat to American democracy. For those who believe in a country governed by checks, balances and the rule of law, a return to Trumpian leadership is dangerous in its own right, but to do so with an impaired leader who cannot govern competently and a fellow authoritarian waiting in the wings is perilous. As voters consider Trump's latest bid for the presidency, it's essential to recognise that this election is not merely a choice between policy platforms or party loyalties. It's a test of our willingness to safeguard our nation from leaders whose fitness for office is in serious question. This election is about protecting the integrity of our democracy from those who would let it collapse in the name of power, loyalty or expedience. Donald Trump has never had the moral compass to lead this country, but even his supporters cannot afford to ignore the signs that he may no longer have the mental faculties to lead it either. The stakes are simply too high. Vote. I'm Anthony Davis. You can find me on the 5 Minute News YouTube channel and podcast, on Wednesdays co-hosting Uncovered, and on Sunday on The Weekend Show with Midas Touch.